Hi everyone, this is Mr. Neil Writer here, also known as the Wax Whisperer. Thank you for joining me in my latest video. It is quite a long video, um, just shy of 20 minutes, so if you are watching, you may uh, want to uh, make yourself a cuppa uh, or take a seat because it is, um, as I say, quite a lengthy procedure. And the reason for that is this case was quite a complex one due to several reasons. First of all, you, you, you may have spotted already, this patient's got very, very hairy ear canals. And it's not so much the view, although, of course, it, it can hinder the view somewhat. But when you've got a lot of hair like this, earwax tends to mat um, to the hair, and it can just make the earwax much harder to remove. Um, on some instances, when you've got excessive amount of hairs where I can't see at all, I would pluck them, I'd use some forceps to pluck them. Otherwise, um, the hair, as long as it doesn't really imp impact the view, you, you generally just leave them in the ear. Um, but when the hairs get wet uh, like this, uh, as you can see, they're very difficult to extract with forceps because they're, they're very greasy. So the forceps, even with the jaws, sharp teeth on the, on the, on the jaws of the, the forceps, they, you can't really get a grip. So this is their left ear. Um, however, it's their right ear that was the more challenging. And in the right ear, they were suffering from otitis externa. So they had an ear infection with occluding discharge, what we call otter ear. And do stay tuned if you can, or fast forward if you want. But the right ear was a very um, interesting case. And uh, I actually um, used a, a new technique in the right ear to remove some hairs that was stuck to the eardrum. I'll just briefly summarise that, uh, but of course, do, do feel free to watch it. Now, on the right side, um, after I moved all the discharge, all the wet gunk that was in the ear, the patient had uh, quite literally, it looked like a nest of hairs stuck to the drum. Now, they were able to hear a lot better immediately, so even if we left it like that, I would, I would have been okay with it. But I wanted to see if I could remove these hairs off the eardrum, and because I've seen this patient several times over the years, so I'm kind of comfortable with their, their ears, even though it is, so it can be quite complex. And so what I did on the right, right side, uh, I tried to remove the, the hairs off the eardrum using suction. Because, uh, of course, when you've got hairs on the eardrum, you've got to be careful that you don't perforate the eardrum in the attempt to remove them. I also tried to uh, use the tip of the forceps to kind of get a grip on these hairs, but... Um, as mentioned, it was difficult because these hairs can get really greasy, some of them. So what I did on the right side, I inserted the ear hook and I positioned it so it was touching the eardrum. So you could see me make contact with the eardrum with the hook. And then once it was just above the hairs uh, on the eardrum, I then turned the, the jobs and horn. So the tip, whilst it's um, in contact with the eardrum, it went under the hairs and I was then able to separate the hairs off the eardrum. So essentially, I placed the, the elbow, should I call it, uh, of the uh, ear hook, um, or the underneath side of the, 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 the hook itself, directly on the drum, and I rotated the hook. And that helped to release and detach some of the hairs off the, the eardrum, and then I used some forceps to remove them. Of course, I wasn't able to remove every little last single hair. I'll be there all day if I did, but... Um, you could see the eardrum, the eardrum was inflamed. So just coming back to their left side, uh, I've removed the occluding debris. Uh, you can see the eardrum there now. I'm just trying to remove some of these loose hairs. So I'm just going in with the forceps. So I can see the whole eardrum now, which is great. Okay, I'm just using to, to see if I can get a grip just to pull these out. Um, when you when you remove hairs from the ear canal, so just say I do pluck every single last hair, it will just grow back at a rate of knots anyway. So uh, it's not really going to solve the, the patient's issue. Um, so, of course, one of the, the reasons for wax buildup could be the hairs in the ear because the wax, as it's trying to migrate, it gets trapped. Um, think about it like a spider's web. And the hairs matter with the wax. So it prevents the wax from fully migrating. But if you, even if you pluck them or trim them, uh, I know a lot. I know for, for visual purposes, people like to trim them during the procedure, but there's no real need. Um, it's just as long as you can see, and they will grow back very quickly anyway, much quicker than the wax can migrate. So um, it's not really going to be a long term solution. So th this is their right ear. You can see the ear canal is quite narrow as well because it's inflamed, and you've got all this discharge, all this wet gunk. You're going to just watch me use microsuction to 
try and remove all this. So you can see I'm able to suction some of the wet discharge, but the hairs are still there. So I'm going deep, probably halfway into the ear canal now. And you can see this creamy consistency. It's, you can see the wetness there. You can see how it's been sucked up. Now, you just have to uh, approach with a bit of trepidation here because I don't exactly know where the eardrum is. So as you can see, I'm approaching this very gently and I'm just kissing the surface because if I poke that sucker in too far, uh, I could easily make contact with the eardrum. So I'm just slowly but surely just getting rid of this discharge until I've got um, some, some of the eardrum that's visible. So just on the back canal wall, I'm just trying to lift some of this gunk away. So here we're on the cartilage portion, so we can put a bit of pressure on the ear canal. So I'm just going in with the endoscope. So I'm using the endoscope to stretch the ear open. Um, I've mentioned it in the last couple of videos, and uh, I was just going to send another one today where the specialist, now if the ear canal's wide and big, it's, you, you can lead with the instrument, but when you've got a narrow, bendy ear canal like this, you need to stretch the ear open with the endoscope. So have the endoscope in the ear first, in position, uh, visualizing the wax, um, and at the same time, stretching open the ear canal. And then whilst the endoscope's in the ear, that's when you insert the, the, the instruments, in this case, the suction prey, when you actually have to look inside the ear momentarily, so even though you've got the endoscope in the ear, you need to lock that hand in position and then have a quick moment to look inside the ear, insert the instrument using the endoscope as a guide so you know which way you're going in. And then you've, as soon as the instrument's into the ear and beyond the endoscope, you flick your attention back to the monitor. And that's how you gain access in this ear. Um, it is a difficult skill, so a lot of the time, uh, during the training at least, we do I do advise uh, specialists that if they are struggling to get the patient themselves to stretch the ear open so that can help but of course that's not ideal long term because some patients may not be able to do that themselves if they've got for example arthritis or they've got poor mobility so it's a skill that you do need to uh, be able to uh, for the specialist to acquire and perform but um, if you do struggle initially uh, there is some we also teach the, them to obviously to request the patient to pull their ear back to assist so just at the base here, just some hairs. I'm just trying to lift these off the canal wall. So I'm just trying to get the bottom jaw underneath, but I've got to be careful. We don't want to poke the, the bottom of the ear canal with the bottom jaw, because that would be really sensitive for the patient. So you can see slowly, I'm just wringing away some of these hairs. So just getting the jaws on either side of the hairs and getting a grip and pulling them away. So, and as I'm going in with the endoscope, I'm trying to get the endoscope through those hairs. So trying to avoid contact wherever possible. It's not always, I'm not always able to do that because there's so many hairs. But when you, if you avoid making contact with the hairs at the tip of the endoscope, you're less likely to get smearing because these hairs are oily and greasy and they've got obviously this discharge, this infection. Um, they can wipe against the tip of the lens. Just there, you can see it's just become slightly blurry, but I can still see what I'm doing. And these forceps I'm using, they are the micro jaw forceps, they're the smallest forceps, but given how narrow the patient's ear canal is because it's inflamed, the forceps are taking up a lot of the space inside. So I'm just reverting back here to the sucker for a moment. So what I want to do now is just trying to remove some of this debris from the back of the ear canal wall, and I want to start visualising the eardrum. It's one of the more complex cases that um, I would do. And the patient does travel. Um, it's every year, it's just perennial. It's this time of year, they're just developing ear infection, more so on this side. And they, they just travel every year, even, even if they don't have any symptoms. So on this occasion, they did um, feel that they had a blocked ear, but in the past, they've just come regardless. Um, because we, we kind of know, even without the symptoms, um, they're just around the corner until their ear gets blocked up. So they like to get it done before Christmas, for obvious reasons. So you may see some of the eardrum right in the middle of screen. So it's slightly blue there, but it's the smallest part visible. So again, back in with the, the forceps. So I'm just 
stretching the ear open. And then I can insert the instrument in and what I want to do, although these hairs won't come out with the sucker, I just want to clear all the debris. You can see some dead skin here as well that we're just lifting off the bottom of the ear canal. So it does look like a nest, um, these hairs. Given we're now on the bony part of the ear canal, we're just going to be careful. I don't want to make contact with the bony part of the ear because, again, that would be uncomfortable. I you can see these flock of hairs that are binding. I might go back in with the forceps to remove that, which we'll see. So again, just stretching the ear. Going to get either side and give it a good pinch and pulling it away. They look like straw or hay almost. It's got that consistency. So um, a lot of men, um, uh, we just have those genes that we can get really thick hair. Now, the patient in the past, they've, 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 they've admitted that they trim their ear hairs, which is fine, it's not a problem, but I've asked them to like seal the entrance of the ear. And on this occasion, they said they've got a bit lazy and they may not have, and they also advised they may have got water in, which again, we've advised the patient to avoid because that always triggers an ear infection for this particular patient. So even now, I still can't see the eardrum. Um, I'm kind of more aware of where the eardrum is, so um, I can be a lot more careful with my depth Insurging because I don't want to over insert it because I can just see hints of the eardrum beyond this hair, but it's still not a great view at the moment. So I'm just at the roof of the eardrum near the attic. I'm just trying to bring away some of these hairs and some debris. And on the posterior superior region of the ear canal and eardrum, we got some. Bit more drier skin here, so I just want to get this away to clear clear the way to, to, to work on the eardrum a bit later. So I'm actually not trying to remove the hairs when I, with the sucker. What I'm trying to do is just suction all that debris around the hairs so it becomes drier. Because when it's wet, it's difficult to remove. So I've dried it up a bit, and then I can get a bit more of a better grip with the forceps. So this is when I'm just using the... Now I'm right on the eardrum now, so I've got to be careful. Because the tip of the jaws, it may not appear so on the video, but... In real life, these, these, the tip of the jaw, it has it's slightly, I wouldn't say it's completely blunt. So I wouldn't say it's sharp, but I wouldn't say it's blunt either. So you can quite easily poke it into the eardrum. Um, and of course, now the eardrum is a lot stronger than you may imagine, but you don't want to perforate this patient's eardrum. So you can be really gentle. And again, we're right on the eardrum now. I'm just trying to figure out a way to remove these hairs that are tangled. I'm just going anteriorly. And again, we're, you can start to see some of the drum now just behind the, 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 the hairs. But it's still a bit wet, just where I am now as well. So I'm just going to suction through the hairs to see if I can dry the eardrum up a bit. Get some hairs at the top and the back. These are a bit tricky to remove because they're quite wet. And again, back onto the eardrum. And you can see the eardrum now, it's become, it's red, so the eardrum is inflamed. And that's because it is infected, they've got um, otitis externa. So it's an outer ear infection, that's why all the ear is much wetter than the other side, it's, it's got discharge there. So these kind of procedures, uh, we wouldn't do it on a patient who, there's certain patients we just wouldn't do this procedure on, like we would, we would have got the debris out, but I would have left it at this because, um, some patients may find this a bit you know, uncomfortable because we're on their ear, they've got a right on the eardrum. We are making direct contact with the eardrum. So you need a patient who's really steady themselves. 
And this patient obviously had the procedure performed several times now, so um, I'm confident in them and they're confident in me, so it doesn't, just allows me to try and remove all this. So you can see the top part of the eardrum there. You can see it's a little bit wet here. I think I'm using the fine end now. I've just gone in with the fine end sucker. So these hairs, they're only this deep for one reason, because the hairs in the ear, um, they, the hair follicles are only found on the outer third of the ear canal. So, and these are loose hairs. So these are not growing hairs. These hairs are not growing from the eardrum. They're not growing from this section of the ear canal. They have been pushed up against the drum. You can see it's been squashed and it's formed into a matrix. almost looks like a, uh, at the end of a broom. And these are really thick hairs as well, and they've overlapped, they've, they've woven together. And it's quite a bundle. You can really see the individual hairs there, all the individual strands, and it, yeah, it has woven. Almost like a bird's nest. And I'm just trying to... The hairs, I can just feel it, and you may be able to visualise it, actually. They are coagulated. They are together as a bundle, as I mentioned. And so when I'm removing, trying to like move the... the the hairs across the eardrum, I can feel that they're all attached and they're, 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 they're going to come, they're going to come together, they're not going to come away singularly. So you can see the eardrum, I can see, even see the hammer bone. And perhaps a few years ago, I would have, or as I said, with the patient, I would have just left it like this. Because they could, they could here, they were happy. Okay, I'm just going to the back of the ear canal, just see if I can peel away some of these hairs, as you can see I could. So do stay, do keep watching, and uh, I did promise you that new technique that I've, perhaps it's not a too new technique, but it's something that I've kind of probably not done before, felt comfortable doing before. Okay, so the back end of the hook, directly on the drum, and then I'm turning this. So there is pressure on the drum as I'm doing that. And I just want to get the tip underneath and then pulling it away. So now I'm going to go back with the forceps. You can see the edge much clearly now. So there's still going to be hairs, guys. So, um, so I'm not going to get every little that strand, but I'm really happy I got this bundled away. I had someone that emailed today uh, who watches the videos and says, I don't use the forceps, what well, implied I don't use the forceps a lot. So I think this is a good video in response <laughs> to show that I do, but only when it's necessary. And each case is different. Uh, when you watch videos, you might think, oh, you should use this, you should use that. But each case is different. And I'm happy with that now. I can see the majority of the eardrum. I don't want to get there any more, do any more. Um, the patient was happy. And yeah, I was very pleased with that. And I hope you enjoyed that video, guys. Take care. Speak soon. Bye.